Hey guys, the subject of today's tutorial is going to be full width content columns. Switching on over into the test site, I've already created a page that contains three columns and some dummy data. Now just for some brief history, the actual row type full width content has been around and since version 3.0. The only real use of it up until now was to essentially allow one element to expand the full width of the browser window. This was useful for things like placing full width map elements, but as far as the columns were concerned, there was just not enough functionality in place to really make use of it. Now with the addition of column padding options and background color and image options, you can really make some unique and exciting layouts using the full width content row type. So right now I've actually not turned the row to full width content, it is still on the basic in container row type, which is the standard, and we can now take a look at what this would look like on the front. As you can see, it's a pretty standard layout. We have three columns with some dummy text in, and we're going to change this into something pretty exciting quickly. Going back over to the add and panel, we can start by editing the row that these columns are contained in and switching the type to full with content. Upon selecting that option, you can see another option has appeared, and that is to vertically center the column. I already had this selected, and in most cases when you're placing columns inside of a full with content row, you're going to want to check this. This will simply make it so that if there's more text or more content in any one column than the rest, that the columns with less content will still be vertically centered and appear to flow better in the scheme of things. So now we've changed it to full with content, and if we just check out the front, it's actually not going to look very good because there is no separation really between these columns. So they're going to be touching directly, which is definitely not what we'd want in a case like this. So let's go back in and change this. All we have to do is now edit the columns. I'm going to start with the first one, and we can start by adding some padding to it, which is going to allow for some separation between each of the columns. And now, after we've done that, just to give an example, such as the demo with the three different color boxes on the home page, I'm going to add a background color. Let's make this one just a blue. And that's about it. So we can save that, and I'm just going to do the same thing for each column really quickly. Let's use the same padding for consistency, and I'll pick a different background color each time around. And the last one, mm, that background color already looks pretty good. So now the last step here would be to simply change, go back into the row type again, and let's make the text color light. Since the colors we've chosen, light text would look better. We have now successfully recreated the look of the demo as far as the color boxes, minus the column animations that you're free to play with, of course. Let's go ahead and create one more full width content row underneath this, and let's experiment with some more effects that we can create with this. Go back into the admin panel, and I'm going to add a new row underneath, and let's change this into a one-third, two-thirds layout so we can have this nice geometrical alignment between our columns. Let's change this also into a full width content, but this time let's add a background image. I selected one of the images that is used on the salient demo, which you might be familiar with, and I'm going to enable the parallax background, and let's just change the text color to light. And now let's create a nice cool effect using the columns. Let's put a background color of black over both of them, but vary the opacity. So let's go with about 0.6 in the larger column. And let's go with 0.8 in the left-hand column. So just for the sake of experimenting, let's only put text on one of them and the other one can just be held open to show the image that is parallaxing in the background. So let's put text in the left column. So let's go and let's add some of that padding that we've been using across all of them. And we can also center the text for this one. Now let's add an element. Instead of the text block that we've been using, let's put a testimonial slider. And for the sake of speed, I've already taken the liberty of copying some more dummy text into these. And just from that right now, we should be able to save the page out and take a look how it looks on the front. Now you can see we have our three full width color boxes above and below it. If you scroll down, we will see that we have another full width row that is indeed parallaxing based on the image we set that has two different shades of opacity background color laid on top of it from our full width content columns. 
One thing to keep in mind about the new options that were added regarding columns in 4.0 is honestly, the layout seen on the demo and the ones I've been creating in various examples throughout here are just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, this is a very flexible feature and basically the sky is the limit. I've already seen some users that have had some great use cases of this feature and I'm excited to see what you're all gonna create with it. So that just about covers the fundamentals of using the new column options in combination with the full with content row type. Cheers guys.